the 10th greatest game of all time. Browns Broncos, the 86th AFC Championship game. Hey, this is what we've been working for a long time. Let's go out and have some fun, and Let's get active for this time. There's a gleam. Let's get the gleam, all right, let's go. You had a Hall of Fame quarterback. You had an all-pro quarterback playing for his hometown team in his first full year as a starter. You also had two premier offenses battling back and forth in a clash for AFC supremacy. Will Hyde dives in for the touchdown. From the Denver 48, Kosar backpedaling. He's throwing the home run ball for Brennan. Turns one way, turns the other. He's got it. Ball at the 15. hasn't sung yet, but you can believe she's in the wings warming up the pipes. Cleveland Browns fans, you had to feel sorry for them. Super Bowl! Super Bowl! They were celebrating. It was their time. And he just destroyed them. The thing that I, I remember most was thinking that this guy's going to do it. We walked in knowing that it was a do or die situation. There was nothing else. It uh, either go to the Super Bowl, we're going home, and we got a chance to do it on this drive. You're talking a 15-play, 98-yard drive in five minutes and two seconds at the end of the fourth quarter, the most pivotal time. Yeah, what better football is there than that? That's like best case scenario every time you play football is that you can drive the entire field. And the efficiency in which he just drove down the field, I've never seen anything like it. Elway is able to drill a 25-yard pass and the drive and the hopes of Denver still alive. I thought the Browns were good enough to stop it. It wasn't until he got down close that I thought, well, maybe this could happen. Cleveland 20, Denver 13, final minute. We're on the sidelines holding hands, you know, because we're down and we're driving and we believe that he can do it. 42 seconds to go. Broncos at the Cleveland 5. The snap to Elway. The look, the throw, touchdown! John Elway has just thrown the touchdown to Mark Jackson, five yards, 98 and a half yard drive. When he threw the winning touchdown pass to Mark Jackson, it just crushed not just a city, but a region of Northern Ohio. People forget as well, his drive didn't win the game. It only sent it to overtime. It's all gonna rest on the foot of Carlos. And what happened in overtime was, to win it in overtime. Ball is down. Carlos's kick is on the way. Rich Carlos missed the field goal. It went over the upright. Anyone in that end zone will tell you that kick was no good. No conspiracy theories on our list. Truth is, the kick was good, and a legend was born. Without a doubt, one of the greatest games of all time. John Elway brought them back against Cleveland in Cleveland, it was a monumental performance. One of the most iconic memories, heroic moments in NFL history, and also it's called the drive. This game is 10, it probably should be higher. The ninth greatest game of all time, Dolphins Chiefs in the 71 AFC Divisional Playoffs. Last week was playoff week. There was one game that was to stand above the rest as a memorable three and a half hours of football. The game took place in this stadium where Kansas City and Miami would record the longest game ever played. So many tremendous players on the field, Hall of Fame coaches opposite each other. There was a lot going on in that one. In a star-studded showdown, running back Ed Podolak stole the show, galloping for an astonishing 350 all-purpose yards. Podolak, right side, touchdown! It felt like he touched the ball on every play. He caught the ball, he ran the ball. I mean, he was all over the field. You knew he was the guy that day. It's one of the most phenomenal games any player has ever played in the NFL, and the numbers will not do justice to what he did on the field that day. Those guys were like riding high. Then all of a sudden, boom, you know, the, the air comes out of them and, and the air inflates us. Here's a handoff, Podlack through the middle, and he fumbles the ball! Dolphins have got it at the 13-yard line! That was sort of the first time we all saw, okay, this is what the Dolphins 
can be. This was kind of the real emergence of them and how they hung tough in that game. Dolphins trying to get into this end zone. Hand off to Zonka. He's in for the touchdown. Don Shula's Dolphins and Hank Stram's Chiefs continued to trade blows as the game became a war of attrition. Total at right side, touchdown! Man, it was just brutal. We kept trying to cut their head off, and we couldn't, and they tried to keep cutting our head off, and they couldn't. He on throws right, throws touchdown! Our number nine greatest game of all time went into sudden death overtime twice. After 82 minutes and 40 seconds of football, the Chiefs had a chip shot chance to win. In the end, Miami survived the test of time battle. The Dolphins win! It was just one of those games that will live forever. Uh, it, was, it was a special game in NFL history. When games go on, two teams that are just absolutely exhausted trying to figure out how the hell to score. That's why this is in the top 10. The eighth greatest game of all time, Steelers Raiders in the 72 AFC Divisional Playoffs. Number eight. This was exactly what you want in a football game. Two of the 70s dominant defenses squared off in a physical match that was long on punishment and short on points. He steps away, throws a pass, intercepted by Nehemiah Wilson. Determined to deliver, Ken the Snake Stabler slithered his way to a fourth quarter touchdown. He's going to run up the left side. Touchdown! I thought the Raiders were going to win. You know, you just you just knew it. Stabler, 30 yards for the touchdown. We have a minute and 13 seconds left to go. It is fourth down, still 10 to go. Pittsburgh's ball is their own 40-yard line. 22 seconds left to play. Our number eight greatest game of all time ultimately came down to one play, which elevated one franchise and hindered another. And Bradshaw back and looking again. Bradshaw running out of the pocket, looking for somebody to throw to, fires it downfield, and there's a collision. And that is cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Franco Harris. Harris is going for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Franco Harris. Is it a catch? Yes. Yes, it's a catch. It was rolled a catch. It looks like a catch to me. You can watch that play as many times as you want and you're going to see the same camera angle of him dipping his hand out of the picture and pulling up a football. Are we sure the Macklin reception really happened? Did he catch that? Are we sure? Don't tell me to hit the ground. He clearly picks it up. We've seen the film a thousand times. You needed a higher power for the Steelers to win that game. If Franco Harris doesn't pick that ball up a centimeter off the turf, don't tell Raiders fans I said that, but he picks it up just above the turf. They go on to win. To have an incredible play like the Immaculate Reception with those two teams, I think you have to include it as one of the most electrifying and thrilling games in the history of the sport. The Immaculate Reception game is at least top five. I mean, come on, it ended up creating the team that's won the most Super Bowls in NFL history. It, they were truly born in this game. So who do I need to talk to to raise this number? The seventh greatest game of all time, Super Bowl 42. This one has to be on the list because of all of the things that are included. It's our last time being here together. Don't take it for granted. Every one of us as little boys have dreamed of playing in the Super Bowl, but here we are. For the 10 and six Giants to even be in this game, it sets the scene. The quarterback cannot be sacked, can't even be hit. We don't stand a chance. This was the most confident team in the history of football, going against a Giants team that we weren't really sure were good. Super Bowl 42 can only be the greatest game of all time if you really, really like defense because it's a lot of bad offensive line play by the Patriots at the worst possible time. This quarterback's internal clock has been just discombobulated. For the Giants to do what they did, they almost unlocked the key to Brady on how to beat him. Get at him up the middle, bother him in the pocket, play rough with him. Sacked by Michael Strahan. Brady was under pressure the entire game. The Giants found a way, and credit to those players, and credit to Steve Spagnuolo to dialing it up. 
so the 18 and 0 season continues to hang very much in the balance. With their legacy in jeopardy, the perfect team needed the perfect drive to take the lead. 7.23 to go in the game. 10-7 Giants. The Patriots are going to have to show us the stuff of champions here. Back to throw Brady. Looking, fires over the middle. It goes complete to Wesley Welker. One of the great drives in Tom Brady's career. He had the undefeated season completely on the line against the team that was crushing him. Touchdown! Randy Moss! Yeah! After Randy Moss caught that first touchdown to take the lead, I'm sitting there thinking, what could possibly be better? And then football happened. Eli Manning had never been known as a winner, and here he is in this moment leading the team against one of the most incredibly talented teams in NFL history. This is what every quarterback lives for. Can Eli Manning do it? Back to throw. The rush. Gonna be hit. Gonna be sacked. No. No, he got out of it. Now he fires downfield, and it is caught. Caught. Wow. I know. It's so clutch, dude. Spun around. He's able to get away. Looks to throw. He does downfield. And a near catch is made. The catch itself, obviously, unbelievable. I have no idea how it works physics-wise. This wasn't some play against a prevent defense at the end of the game. This is against one of the greatest safeties in the game, Rodney Harrison, that goes up and he can't come down with the ball on David Tyree. I bought a car from him last weekend. David Tyree with a ball that stuck to his helmet. That's amazing. 17-14, fellas. One touchdown, we are world champions. Four plays later, New York solidified their giant impact on NFL history. Touchdown Giants! In the left corner of the end zone! And the Giants, with the most improbable win, have won Super Bowl 42. I think it was one of the most miraculous, amazing games. That moment, Super Bowl history, NFL history, it has everything you could possibly want. The sixth greatest game of all time, the 1981 epic, Miami. 81 divisional playoff game between the Chargers and the Dolphins is the greatest game in NFL history. Another NFL Films classic. You talk about two teams that were just going back and forth at one another. You have Air Coriel and on the other side, you know, Don Shula. And to see them go back and forth, boy, that was incredible. I remember watching that game. The Chargers were up at one point 24 to nothing. Touchdown, San Diego. Offensively, the Chargers have blasted this game wide open. The game had everything. I mean, you thought it was over when the Chargers went up, but then the Dolphins, 17-0 in the second quarter. Touchdown to Joe Rowe. It was literally a game that had you kind of on the edge of your seat, especially in the first half, and you see it end on the Tony Nathan hook and ladder play, which I still can't believe happened. So that's one of those gadgets you get away with if you can execute it, and they did. When they did the hook and ladder, Duper to Nat Moore. Did you ever see Top Gun? It was literally like, where'd he go? Where'd who go? And he's just trotting into the end. And you're like, how's it a tie? That was a great game. Immediately when you think, okay, Chargers, Dolphins, playoff game, you say, oh, Kellen Winslow. Comes right to your mind. This is a tight end who might have been the best at his position when you consider the era. I mean, nobody was doing what he was doing. Kellen Winslow is a football hero that night. Back to try and help out Charlie Joyner. Protection in time, over the middle. He's got his win, Matt Winslow, Woo! touchdown. He was all over the field. He caught 13 balls that day, he made a ton of great plays. His performance was just absolutely off the charts. I think it's the greatest performance by a tight end in playoff history. Winslow was wonderful, but his biggest impact came late in the fourth quarter. Four seconds left to go. He kicked it, it is blocked. Great effort by Winslow. Overtime in Miami. To get the Chargers against a tough Dolphins team in overtime, that's as good as it gets. In our number six greatest game of all time, both teams left everything on the field. The emotional level of this game has turned into one of the most unbelievable playoff games in NFL history. In the end, the Chargers outlasted the Dolphins after 74 minutes of play. San Diego Chargers win and move on to the AFC Championship game. 
I think it's the greatest game ever played because you've got all the epic aspects. It goes overtime. Kellen Winslow basically having to be carried off the field. That was one game that if you ever want to measure determination, that was it. It had two quarterbacks, prize fighters, Fouts and Shock, just blow for blow. It was an absolute masterpiece of football. And now, the fifth greatest game of all time, Super Bowl 49. That Patriots Seahawks Super Bowl, it was like Frazier and Ali. It's just two champions going at each other, proving who's the best dynasty right now. Play fake to Laguerre, quick throw, underneath, touchdown Ooh. Patriots! New England strikes first! The seesaw battle, Patriots drive the field score, then the Seahawks come right back. The handoff inside to Lynch, he's down to the two, he dives in! Touchdown Seahawks! Just an unbelievable game. We'll never see anything like that again. He lobs it to the right side for Gronkowski. Has a step, has a touchdown, Patriots! But then, at the back end of the second quarter, suddenly the game takes on a different life. Looks, he's gonna throw hard. Ball is reaching up front! It is Matthews for a touchdown! <laughs> gutsy, gutsy call by Pete Carroll. In the third quarter, the Seahawks took a 10-point lead. Way fake, Russell drops back, looks, fires, got a man in the end zone, down! Seahawks! You gotta step up and challenge the line of scrimmage. You just need everybody to do their job. Hey, we need a big championship drive, that's what we need. So people forget about Brady in the fourth quarter of that game, leading two long touchdown drives. Brady delivers a laser. It was so precise and so pinpoint, you almost forgot watching it how good the defense he was playing against was. Brady fires back to the end zone. Touchdown, New England! In the most important moment, in the most important game, in the biggest stage, he comes up big. I mean, this was the Seattle Seahawks defense in their absolute prime. Just pick them apart. Looks left, throws for Edelman! Touchdown, Patriots! It was a very well-played, well-schemed game. <laughs> And it got better as the game went on. Oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. He didn't pull over throw. Russ is going to lay it up over the top this time. Curse reaching up. Ball slap. He, he had caught it. It fell into his arms. Holy catfish. Jermaine Curse just does this bobble, comes down with it, and they have the ball at the four or five yard line. And you've got to believe the Patriots are done. The Patriots are sitting there saying, oh my God, it's going to happen again. We're going to lose the Super Bowl on a ridiculous catch. Yeah, he's got to make a play. Russell Wilson extends the hands he has. Pass. Wilson, quick throw. And it's going to intercept it. He intercepts it. Oh, the ball was. We're going to fool them. We're going to run a slant. I know we got beast mode back there, and they think we're going to run it, but we're not. What an unbelievable turn of events. This man's name is Beast Mode. All they had to do was just give it to one of the best running backs of his era, and the game was over, and they couldn't do it. I'm going to keep saying it, man. How do you not give the ball to Beast Mode? And the New England Patriots are on to a celebration. It was the perfect back and forth game. It was a heavyweight fight. It was a great game from beginning to end. For my money, that's the greatest game in NFL history. The fourth greatest game of all time, Super Bowl 43. This could be even higher on the list too. I love this game. Kurt Warner in Arizona is one of the great underdog stories. When nobody else believed in us, you guys did. No one cares about the Cardinals, it was Arizona. The Cardinals were talked about going into the playoffs as, is this the worst playoff team in NFL history? Heading into their Super Bowl 43 battle, the Cardinals stood like David compared to the larger than life Steelers who boasted their own Goliath. We remember one play, and that's James Harrison running back the interception. 18 seconds left of the second quarter here at Super Bowl 43. First and goal, Arizona at the two-yard line. Steelers show blitz. They're back. He throws the pass up. It's going to be picked up. An amazing play by James Harrison. He runs 100 yards 
a guy that weighs 4,000 pounds, okay, with four guys on his back. 25, 30, 35, 40, still on his feet at the 45. That interception was a feat. No, he's still on his feet. Just push him. I mean, it's not Willie Galt. It's not Barishnikov. Just yell James, Tebow, maybe turns around. Nothing. 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and that's a touchdown from Pittsburgh. A 100-yard touchdown return by James Harrison. Then in the fourth quarter, things go nuts. Warner in the gun. Arrington blanks it to his left. Warner to pass with time. Fires over the middle. The Fitz caught at the 45, 50. Fitz is loose 40, 30. Goodbye. Cardinals lead. Larry Fitzgerald, in a career-defining performance, breaks one. It looks like he just won the Super Bowl for the Cardinals for the team that he'd carried on his back for years. You gotta be kidding me. The Cardinals lead Super Bowl 43. The biggest holy cow moment I've ever had. I thought they were dead. This was a haymaker that was going to knock them out. Time to be great. Time to be great. The Cardinals have the lead, and the Steelers drive down the field. Santonio to the 10. This might be the greatest Steelers offensive drive of all their Super Bowl wins. Maybe the greatest catch in the history of the Super Bowl. Throws it back corner of the end zone. Santonio with a touchdown! That man looked like 6 o'clock. You ever see 6 o'clock? Like straight up and down. Like his whole body was just like 6 o'clock, straight up. I still have no idea how he got both of his toes down. I was in the upper deck at that game, yelling into my phone to my wife, did he make the catch? Did he make the catch? No, I touched that. the football, came down on both toes, inbounds, touchdown. It's number four on the list, but it really should be number three. Cardinals come back from the 20 to seven deficit. The Santonio Holmes catch may be the best catch in Super Bowl history. That just produced all the thrills you could need in a Super Bowl. The third greatest game of all time, the Ice Bowl. This maybe is the best. Number three, if anything, seems a little bit low. The Ice Bowl, it signifies a moment, really for the NFL, that everybody kind of recognizes. Two of the most iconic franchises, Cowboys and Packers. You had Tom Landry, you had Vince Lombardi, you had Ice. Ice makes everything cooler. There was a guy in the stands who died. The refs literally could not blow the whistles. They were making hand motions to actually call penalties because it was so cold. When people think about cold weather football games, they're gonna think about the Ice Bowl. They're gonna think about the Cowboys coming from a much warmer environment and going toe to toe with a classic Green Bay Packers team. Our number three greatest game featured a negative 48 degree wind chill, yet Lombardi's Packers were unfazed. Here are the Hill of Blanker. Again, Starr goes back to throw. Foxy's man fires, it is complete. And the Green Bay Packers have another first down. Drive gets the protection, fires, the pass is complete. Green Bay, they're at their highest peak at that point, and they're out there in the cold, and they're reveling in it, and they're just looking at these guys from Texas thinking, you can't take this. In the end, they didn't. Star pumps one up the middle, the pass is complete, he's out there for the touchdown in the end zone, and the Green Bay Packers draw first blood. The Packers scored on their first drive, and at that point, everybody figured, well, like, this game's over because the Packers were the Packers. I mean, they were the team of the decade. Back to throw, fires a long one. It is complete to Boyd Dollar. He'll go into the end zone with the touchdown. Oh, Game's barely started, and it's 14-0 Green Bay already. The Dallas Cowboys appear to be in big trouble. As it turned out, frigid conditions froze the Packers' momentum while a cold Cowboys defense began to thaw. Great play by Willie Towns. Bar start. The Cowboys fought back and got back in the game. And then at the end, you know, they have this possession, they're driving down the field, and all of a sudden you're saying, wow, you know, the Cowboys might actually win this thing. Meredith pitches out to Reeves, coming around left side, the halfback pass downfield is Ritzel at the 20, Ritzel to the 10, Ritzel to the 5, he scores! 17 to 14. And Chuck, I would say that the Packers have got their work cut out for them now. 
Yes, sir. Not, defensively, they don't seem to be coming off the ball. Maybe 53 and 52, see? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. As the temperatures continued to fall, the pressure rose. Bart Starr was numb to both. I mean, that final drive in the ice bowl, I mean, you don't have many tougher situations than what he faced, bringing that team from behind, knowing this is your last possession, and you as the quarterback, you playing on an icy field, you can't even feel your, the football in your hands. You have to make every right decision and every right throw. And he did. And the backers have finally solved this big Dallas Cowboy run. Bart Starr comes over, calls the play, says we're gonna call a pitch, but he's gonna keep it. And all I remember is Lombardi saying, then run it and let's get the hell out of here. Bart Starr coming over to check with coach Vince Lombardi. The backers inches away from something that has never before happened in pro football history, a third straight NFL championship. There's 20 seconds on the clock. Starr begins the count. Takes the snap. He's got the quarterback sneak and he's into the touchdown. The Packers are going to be NFL champions for the third straight year. These two teams were really leaving it all out there. Matching up in that kind of weather, I mean, it's clearly one of the best games of all time. The second greatest game of all time, the 1958 NFL Championship game. This, to me, is the greatest game ever played in the National Football League for what it meant to the league. The NFL would not be what the NFL is today without the 58 championship game. It should be number one on the list. And we're ready for the greatest football game ever. This was the exact launching point that football needed to become a massive sport for the next 70 years. Our number two greatest game was the genesis of America's newest form of nature, pro football on national television. The fact that this game captivated the national audience Again, I think there's reasons even more so than football that make this one of the greatest games ever played. The 1958 championship game featured 12 Hall of Famers, yet sloppy play dominated primetime TV. I gotta got a beef with this being called the greatest game ever played because the first half of this game is turnover after turnover. Johnny Unitas is throwing interceptions. And New York is back in business. First three series of the game end in turnovers. And the fumble, and the ball of our every cover. The game continued in a downward spiral as the national audience watched what appeared to be an impending blowout. The Colts were up 14 to three. Throws down on the end zone and it's a touchdown. They got down to the goal line and if they had scored there 21-3, the game had been pretty much over. I don't think this is the greatest game ever played if this goal line stand doesn't happen. The Baltimore Colts with fourth and one. The Giants aroused, digging in along the goal line. Let's see what happens now. United slips wide out to Amici. Four down, and the Giants take over the five-yard line. The Giants got the ball, and then they drove the length of the field and scored, and all of a sudden, now it was a game again. Down by three late in the fourth quarter, Johnny Unitas birthed and perfected the two-minute drill. People are tuning in for the championship game, and what they see is Johnny Unitas leading one of the greatest comebacks we've ever seen. He was calm. He didn't get rattled. He knew how much time was on the clock. He just mastered the two-minute drill and used it in that game as a platform, a showcase. People who were casual watchers were saying, OK, this sport, which I haven't paid attention to, we're on to something here. This can be entertaining every Sunday. With seven seconds to play, Myra kicks from the 20. High score, 17 all. What made that game, you know, what we refer to as the greatest game of all time, was the overtime part of it. It was the first time that overtime was used to decide an important game. In a sudden death scenario, Johnny Yu methodically drove his team down the field, epitomizing the meaning of putting the team on your back. Johnny Unitas is so sophisticated, like he's playing in modern era. That is a glimpse of the future of the NFL that happened in 1958. Unitas gives Gramici the Colts to the world champion. That might have been maybe not the greatest game, but the most significant game. In New York, on national television, dramatic score late, dramatic score to win the game in overtime. It's got to be not just in the top 10, 
but probably pretty close to one in terms of greatest games ever played. And now, the greatest game of all time, Super Bowl 51. There's no way that Super Bowl 51 can be the top of this list. I think, yeah, top to bottom, it, it, yeah, I think Super Bowl 51 has to be the greatest game. The greatest Super Bowl comeback? Yeah, it should be on the list, but I don't think it's the greatest game ever played. It's the greatest game I've ever seen. Let's dominate today by everybody that loves us! Let's go! Dominate on three! Give me all you got! Yeah. I'm gonna give you all I got! Yeah. There is no doubt that that deserves to be the number one greatest game. It's unbelievable. It rewrote the expectations for Super Bowls. The first half, you have the Falcons completely pummeling the Patriots. They were getting eviscerated. If anything, 28-3 was charitable. The Atlanta Falcons are playing downhill right now. Everything that they are doing is working. They never seen anything like this. You have Tom Brady throwing that interception. Pass is picked off. It's coming back to the right. And then looking like, like Chris Farley on figure skates trying to tackle the guy on the pick six. That game was over, over, over. Ryan gonna throw. Here's Coleman at the five. He'll beat Nikovich to the end zone. Falcons 28, New England three. You gotta be kidding me. Halfway through, like in the concourse, Falcons fans were partying. Drinking, taking photos, hugging, kissing. People were making out, didn't even know each other. I had a cousin who already booked a flight to Atlanta to go to the parade. The parade. This is the third quarter. I think my parents left the Super Bowl party they were at because they were like, ah, it's over. And then I, my mom's texting me being like, wait, what? Got lock in now, laser focus. You have to understand that if you take your foot off the gas, there's no way you are going to win, especially against Tom Brady and the Patriots. In the second half, the Patriots offense was not only efficient, but dominant. Third and 10 from the New England nine. Tom takes the step. There's pressure. He throws toward the right. Hogan makes the grab at the 25. What a strike between a pair of defenders. And you look at the characters involved, Brady, Belichick. You look at some of the plays involved, the Julian Edelman catch. Ball's kept diving for it. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. Oh, that's a goodness what a play with the ball literally inches above the turf. Crazy, I swear to God. No way, look at it. Watch. No. No. That play, I hope, doesn't get lost to history because that was really the one play that changed the entire complexion of that game. Hey, no fear. No fear. Try to lose. You can feel the tension and you start looking at the sideline of the Falcons and you can see them getting tight and you can feel this Patriot machine just going. Brady surveys the defense. Tom takes the snap. He backs up, hands it to White. Up the middle! Touchdown, Patriots! It's amazing how this team is never dead. It wasn't a historic meltdown by the Falcons. It was just unprecedented execution by the Patriots. Tom takes the snap. Quick throw to Amendola. Screen left. He's in! Yeah! Yeah! And once down by 25. The Patriots are even with Atlanta. Every single play the Patriots needed, they somehow got and they ended up pulling out that game. Two yards from a fifth Super Bowl championship. Brady gets the snap, pitches out wide, gets a block, cuts inside, he digs, he turns, he dives! It is a touchdown! The Patriots have won Super Bowl 51. These are things that people will never forget. And for those things to all have come together for one game makes it the best game of all time. I can pretty safely say that Super Bowl 51, the 25 point comeback uh, in the second half, 28 to three, uh, Tom Brady throwing for 466 yards, first overtime Super Bowl. Uh, there's no doubt that was the greatest game of all time. If you're doing the all-time greatest halves, you might have the right answer with Super Bowl 51, but I don't think you have it with the all-time great games. If this is the Patriots' first Super Bowl win, maybe it's not the greatest game. But when this is the way you get that fifth ring, oh my God. I mean, you can't write a Game of Thrones episode that well.